Good evening. I'd like to call the Davie County Commissioner's meeting of June 5th, 2017 to order. Before we get started, um, as I'm sure most of you have heard, um, a two-term former commissioner, Mr. Carl Boone, um, passed over the weekend. He was a commissioner from 94 to 2002. And um, before the invocation, um, as we celebrate his life, I would ask for a moment of silence for the legacy, to remember the legacy is left in this county, uh, many contributions to this county, and he's a fine man. So at this time, we'll take a moment of silence, and then, uh, then I'll do the invocation, and we will move on. So at this time, please bow your head. Dear God, as we come before you this evening, we're thankful for the many blessings that we have here in Davie County. We're constantly reminded that freedom's not free, and we hopefully are always cognizant of that. We're, as we remember the Boone family in their time of grief, please give them strength. We also remember the victims of the storms from a couple weeks ago. Please be with those folks as they rebuild and move forward. As always, we ask for your wisdom during the events of tonight, and we will give you all the credit and glory for what is accomplished here this evening. In your name, amen. amen. All right. This time, stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance and the flags on the left corner tonight. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, um, next item is to adopt the agenda, but I understand we have a couple of an amendment to the agenda. Yes, we do. We need to amend the agenda for A, the dangerous dog proposed ordinance to be amended in 90.04 at number four to strike the following. The Davie County Manager and the Davie County Department of Social Services Director. And the second one, B, is the zoning text amendment ordinance section 155.01 and 155.214 be amended to show that throughout the documents that the director, the zoning administrator, and the zoning officer are one and the same and not appointed by the Board of County Commissioners, but is an employee of the county and reports to the county manager. Okay. Have those proposed amendments, do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay, five zero. Now we need a motion to approve the agenda as amended so good second motion and second any discussion seeing none all in favor raise your hand the agenda is adopted as amended all right next item is the public comment period uh, mr vogler is there and anyone signed up no one has signed up tonight okay thank you next we go to public hearings the first one is a zoning text amendment mr meadwell Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before you tonight, you have uh, a set of text amendments to section 155.001 and section 155.214 of the Davie County Zoning Ordinance. Um, these ordinance, these uh, changes are uh, most directly referenced to changes to uh, the definition section of the ordinance. Uh, these text amendments came about um, as a result of an appeal of uh, my decision in trying to determine um, the uh, side yard and rear yard setbacks for an accessory structure that went to the Board of Adjustment. Um, as a result of that hearing, um, 
the uh, current language that we have in the ordinance was not clear, um, meaning that uh, most setbacks uh, or front yard setbacks uh, were always measured to the public road right away. Uh, this particularly doesn't fit well when you have pieces of properties that are sometimes 100, 200, 500 feet off of a public right of way and are serviced by uh, private road easements. So um, staff working with the attorney's office um, created or uh, developed these changes um, and we hope that these provide clarity um, in, in applying these setbacks to these unusually shaped pieces of property and making it more clear of what is the front yard setback, what is the front yard side yard, rear yard. So um, the uh, ordinance also uh, allows the uh, some discretion to be given to the director um, in, in these situations where uh, you have uh, a piece of property that fronts on two streets to be able to, if, if each street is, is both uh, equal to each other, to help make a decision as to what will become the front yard and what will become uh, a side yard or, or, or a rear yard. Or in certain situations when you do have this uh, similar type situation with um, an ir irregularly shaped piece of property that is located way off the public road, as long as the, uh, uh, the spirit and the intent of the ordinance is being met, the director um, has that ability to be able to work with the property owner in determining um, what are those front yards, side yards, and rear yards. So, um, the uh, planning board did hear this at its March meeting and did vote to approve unanimously by a vote of six to uh, zero in favor of recommending this to you. So, um, I'll be more than glad to answer any questions that the board may have. So, you, Andrew, thank you for this. And you and Ed worked on this. We did. And, and we did. did you refer to other counties that had we similar did. And, language? And, you know, when we looked at the way uh, the ordinance from its origination in 1973, those definitions for those have not changed. Um, and as we all know, our development patterns have changed. Um, and it just was not applicable. Um, and it, it just, uh, and in this situation um, where uh, my decision was appealed to the Board of Adjustment, um, this was clearly defined um, that um, because the access was not um, to a public road, it was, it was this private, and this private easement just squirreled, you know, 90 degrees this way, and then, you know, um, it, it made it difficult. Um, to understand um, from a lay person to say, well, what is my setback? Um, um, but it also allows, gives staff that ability to clearly say, well, it's, it's well, that's how it's written. No, it's clear, clearly written that way. So, um, so hopefully we can avoid that. Um, so that was a good end, end result of that exercise with the Board of Adjustment. So um, I, I, I don't know if Mr. Vogel wants to chime in, but I, I feel it's, it's appropriate. and. Uh, uh, meets our meets our uh, needs. And that appeal dealt with, with some issues on whether it was a flag lot, and if so, flag lot. Then at what point in time do you consider what the front road or front yard is versus a south yard? And that's that's the issue that has never been been resolved here in this county before that. Okay. On this a, lot, a, a similar line, do we have any overlay districts left in this county? Let's say that one more time. Do we have any overlay districts left in the county? We do. Um, you do, know, do. Uh, we have two. Uh, uh, probably the most uh, predominant one is the um, uh, the quality design overlay, which is um, in the eastern um, quadrant of the county. Runs basically, you know, uh, I'll just give you Farmington Road, kind of down, kind of scoots down across Canatra all the way back up to the county line. And then you also have the Coolamy uh, zoning overlay district, which would you know, do all in, of these apply to the overlay it would districts be. also? The, the, yeah, these these apply to those district standards, okay. unless that's, that's um, written el elsewhere more specifically. <clears throat> but it would apply to everything, yes, sir. Okay. I didn't know we had any left. I knew we had some at one time. Well, we can discuss that at a later time <laughs> uh, to the need of those. But uh, if 
action that the board should take tonight is, is one approve that the amendment is consistent with all applicable adopted plans and considers the action to be reasonable in the public interest to approve with changes that the amendment is not fully consistent with all applicable plans but the following changes are recommended in order to make it fully consistent three denial that the amendment is not consistent with all applicable adopted plans is, and does not consider the action to be reasonable and in the public interest or for defer the amendment for additional consideration so and I think uh, what we would ask is that you would include those changes and amendments that uh, were uh, introduced by uh, Board Member Ferguson there. So. Right. And you this, this does require a public hearing. This, this has been a duly notified public hearing for this amendment request. Okay. Well, any other, anybody got any other questions for Mr. Meadwell? It is a public hearing, so we will turn it over to Mr. Vogler. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The chair has announced this is the hour and day of the public hearing for a proposed change in the zoning ordinance for Davie County in sections 155-001 and 155.214, as same relates to definitions and yard designations. There's been duly published uh, no notice of this public hearing in the newspaper general circulation of Davie County is required by North Carolina General Statute 160A-20G of the Act and the Clerk to the board has attached an affidavit showing publication in said paper on a date at least 10 days prior to this year. And I would ask any and all people who wish to comment at this public hearing, come forward to the podium, state your full name for the board, and then comment on the proposals. Mr. Chairman, seeing no one come forward board to comment, I would now turn the public hearing back over to you as board chair closing uh, for you to close the public comment section of this public hearing and provide the board the opportunity to discuss among yourselves what if any action you wish to take with regards to this matter okay thank you at this time we'll declare the public hearing closed um, any comments or discussion from the board seeing none entertain a motion to uh, one of our four options uh, approve approve with changes deny or defer motion to approve Motion to approve by Mr. Jones. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Barrett. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your hand. That passes 5 0. Thank you. Next, we have an ordinance amendment on dangerous dogs. Officer DeWitt, are you presenting, I presume? Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, lady. Um, before you is some language proposed changes to 90-03 definitions in the potentially dangerous dog definition. We are uh, in section two, we are adding the private property of another um, and a street or sidewalk. They were omitted from the original draft. Um, they're pretty important. The original draft made it uh, public property, and we had that issue come up in a hearing recently, and, and uh, it needs to be changed. Um, in 9004, uh, Section B, we've added potentially dangerous dogs to that list of measures that we can take to protect the public from a potentially dangerous dog. Um, we had omitted in the original draft language that would allow us to take action against somebody that if I declared their dog potentially dangerous I really had no recourse with that animal we were, we were stuck with state law which again there's no recourse for a potentially dangerous dog and then in uh, we also changed um, the appeals process not really changed it but streamlined it to make it clearer for the public um, the uh, the appeal still goes to the county manager's office, but we make the health director or designee uh, the officer for hearing purposes. And then under 9005, uh, we just changed from David County Animal Control to David County Animal Services, the language there, and then added a provision that would require somebody, if we declared the dog a public nuisance, they would have to have the dog microchipped. 
which is obviously important. It's if if I declare a dog, there's a lot of dogs that look alike, and that microchip allows us to lock in on one particular animal and and the owner. And that's uh, that sums up all the changes that have been proposed to the ordinance. Okay. All right, any questions for Officer DeWitt? I just have a general quick question. Yes, sir. What, what in, in theory, what's the general cost of the microchipping of an animal? About $25. Okay. And we're, we are in the process of trying to work that out so we can do it in-house, and we can do it for about $3 if we can do it in-house. Okay. So it won't be cost prohibitive for somebody. Okay. Okay. So, Officer, the, um, the appeal, if any, would go to the David County Health Director. Is that the intent? The Health Director would be the the appointed person to oversee the hearing. She would decide who participated in the hearing, set the hearing date with the, with the county attorney, um, and uh, then make the proper notifications. had a problem with potentially dangerous dogs or dangerous dogs not just in public areas but on private property y yes sir private property yes too. sir it, it, if, if it's a uh, if it goes from one yard to the next right. um, really I, I I've got no recourse currently so in, unless they take it out on the street um, I, I I don't have the authority to uh, to put any any restrictions on that animal Mr. Barrett, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, both of these ordinances that came before you or these amendments tonight and, and proposed uh, recommendations came from situations where, you know, we did have these situations and realized we need to update these ordinances. And uh, Officer DeWitt's been great to work with through this process. He'll obviously still consult with the public health director. Uh, she'll render her decision, and then if there needs to be an appeal, obviously I can hear that at this point. But He's exactly right. Um, his enforcement's very limited, which is, you know, uh, uh, an issue for us when we have a dangerous dog situation. So we're glad we caught this, and we're glad we have the opportunity to fix it. So thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. If not, this is a public hearing as well. So I will turn it over to Mr. Vogler. Again, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the chair has announced this is the hour and day of the public hearing for the proposed changes to zoning ordinance for Davie County in Chapter 90. Is the same relates to dangerous dogs, potentially dangerous dogs, and hearings by the county there. Uh, it's, this has been uh, due publication of the notice of public hearing in the newspaper with general circulation in Davie County as required by North Carolina General Section. Uh, statute section 168-20G of the Act and the clerk to the board is attached an affidavit uh, showing publication of uh, the paper at least 10 days prior to the date of this hearing. I would ask each and every person who wishes to comment on this uh, proposed ordinance amendment uh, come forward to the podium, state your full name for the board, and then comment on the proposal thereof. Mr. Chair, seeing no one come forward, I would now turn the public hearing back over to you as board chair uh, and to the board closed and so you might close the public comment section of this hearing, uh, provide the board the opportunity to discuss among yourselves what if action, if any, you wish to take with regards to this matter. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Vogler. At this time, we will declare the public hearing closed. Um, any comments, questions from the board? Mr. Chairman, I would like the motion that we approve the amendments. We have a motion. We have a second. I'll second. Any discussion? Further discussion? Discussion, just to comment. I want to thank Officer DeWitt for everything he does. I get lots of positive comments about his efforts and appreciate what you do. 
and all your work on this amendment or proposed amendment. All right. Any other comments? Okay. All in favor of the dangerous dog ordinance amendment, raise your hand. That passes 5-0. Right. Next, we move to the third public hearing, which is the 1718 budget, and call on Mr. Eller. All right, Mr. Chairman and uh, fellow commissioners, thank you for uh, the opportunity to present to you tonight. I know that we have submitted our recommended uh, budget to you, and tonight the associated public hearing after. Uh, before I get started, next week marks my six-month anniversary. <laughs> Uh, so we won't take a straw vote about whether that's good or bad from uh, the department heads, but uh, it's been a pleasure working with them. I, I can't tell you what a distinguished uh, group of, of people I'm surrounded with each and every day, and uh, they're just very competent. And, you know, for our county, uh, although I, I think sometimes we hear a lot about larger counties and the resources they have, I can tell you these folks show up each and every day and give, give more uh, than their best and do whatever they can do for our citizens. So I'm honored and blessed to be around each and every one of them. And um, we couldn't have pulled this budget together without them, uh, without the leadership of uh, our finance and, and budget office working with each of them and uh, without the, the leadership of all the departments. So I'm very proud to be uh, on their team. But tonight I'm here to present to you as required by General Statute 159-11 to recommend my fiscal year uh, 1718 proposed budget for you recommended budget in the amount of uh, 67 million one hundred sixty three thousand dollars and, and nine dollars which maintains our property tax rate at 0 .728 uh, per one hundred dollars valuation plus our uh, four cent countywide fire tax so the budget is balanced in accordance um, with the local government budget and fiscal control act um, and I think is very consistent with our a historical mindset of fiscal sustainability and the 25% fund balance reserve policy that all of you've adopted uh, before my time. So with that, uh, I'll run through uh, a quick overview of, of this and, and see if you have any questions. I've appreciated your feedback. Uh, uh, as we've gone through this process to date, we feel like we have uh, a good budget given uh, our revenue situation and uh, relatively flat um, tax valuation. So uh, with that, we'll, we'll hop into this. So we want to show you how the total budget uh, breaks out here. You can see this. I won't read all these amounts, but you can see our general fund and E911, water sewer enterprise fund, solid waste enterprise fund, our employee health fund. Uh, and again, uh, you can see that we're able to show this total budget amount while maintaining the tax rates uh, that I previously mentioned to you. In addition to that, uh, you can see our estimated general fund uh, revenues here, appropriated fund balance, and estimated expenditures. And all these copies were placed online for our, our public to view as well as, as yourselves as uh, we rolled out our recommended budget to you. An overview of what the general fund revenue looks like, as you can see, property taxes are the biggest majority of uh, of our revenues, and you can see the other um, small chunks as, uh, in addition to sales taxes, we uh, move through this today, but you can see our property taxes uh, really set the stage for uh, our revenue forecast, and we thank our tax office for the work that they do to help us with that, uh, particularly during a revaluation year, and so I think they've, they've been very busy this year. You can also see our expenditures. Uh, you can see from this uh, that we definitely fund our public safety, education, and human services departments uh, at the larger amounts in addition to our general government. Um, then you can see uh, our debt service listed there as well, among other things. So this year for education, uh, we saw some uh, increases there. We have the interlocal with our uh, partners of Davie County Schools. That gives us uh, an idea of, of relative stability from year to year versus uh, in many counties not having that kind of stability, not really knowing uh, what that amount's going to be year to year. Uh, I think we've, we've got a relatively good return on investment for that. Uh, I think uh, a large percentage of those students that come out of our school system are well prepared for uh, higher institution learning, and, and uh, uh, we appreciate our school system and partnership with Dr. Hartness and his staff for that, and I know 
uh, children are very excited to get out to the new high school soon. In addition to that, we're also investing in Davie Community College or the College of Davidson and Davie Counties. Uh, and we've talked about that before and some of the growth that they're experiencing uh, and trying to get programming here locally in Davie County with some of our capital improvement projects as well. And speaking of capital improvement, you remember, we just recently passed our capital improvement plan. Uh, and, and I think all those investments uh, will pay off for us. There's many renovations that need to take place, some of which you've already seen as you walked into this building. Uh, we've been working on, on this as well. Uh, we also have some uh, animal shelter, uh, the Brock, the courthouse renovations, detention center. Uh, we will have to address our morgue issue as well uh, this year in conjunction and partnership uh, with our hospital uh, to assess uh, kind of what opportunities we have there. Obviously, our Rec and Park repurposing project that's coming up, and then our space needs assessment uh, uh, that you'll hear about tonight uh, on consent agenda. In addition to that, we did make some modifications. Because of our space study, uh, we need to uh, continue to study uh, some of the land and storage needs of our senior center, as well as uh, wait on our body cameras for our sheriff's office. We know that that's important. Uh, sheriff Hartman concurs with that, but you have to have technology associated with that, and so uh, we need to do some testing with that before we uh, go with a purchase of, of that magnitude. And then as far as capital outlay goes, this is uh, obviously our major projects that we have every year. Uh, you can see those from uh, some rekeying that we have to do in some of our buildings. Brock needs some uh, work that's done that we talked about uh, earlier and have talked about over the past few months. Uh, Again, uh, re-key locking uh, as we assume the, uh, the former high school building and then our uh, court facilities as we make those renovations and as well as our detention center and our 911 backup, our facilities maintenance, EMS health inspections and senior center. So uh, again, I won't read all those, uh, but those are pressures that we uh, need to, to address this year. We do have a ranking process for these. These are all tier one items. They're not. Uh, items that uh, we feel like can wait. Uh, those other items that could did, and they aren't showing up in this. You can also see that our sheriff has some uh, uh, vehicle replacement needs as well as some technology needs uh, that we're taking care of. And then we have um, uh, at social services a, a van replacement, a van that needs to be purchased, but also uh, some building maintenance and, and repairs that need to occur at the annex and then DSS and health also have roof replacement needs that have to occur. Uh, and then obviously our technology solutions partners have to be able to support our, our departments and they're included in our capital outlay projects this year as well. For public utilities, uh, a lot of these are replacement uh, type issues and, and improvement issues. Uh, as you look at uh, what our utility partners are doing. They do a, a fabulous job for us, and so these keep our system where they need to be to get our customers the service that they need, and uh, we feel like these items are uh, appropriate for us to move forward on this year. As far as employee compensation, uh, employees uh, are eligible to receive up to 2%. Uh, we wanted to make this a performance-based process this year, so we will have performance evaluations for our staff. Uh, the first 1% is going to occur uh, in the form of a cost of living on July 1. The additional 1% will be allocated uh, in an amount in each department, and department heads can award uh, reward good performance that way. Uh, they know their employees better than we do in county administration. They know uh, the performance of their staff and, and they will be able to reward uh, appropriately there up to the additional 1% either in a lump sum or 1% COLA amount depending on the needs of the employee. So we feel like this gives departments the discretion they need. I'm pleased to say, uh, as opposed to other counties around us that we've talked to, we have no health insurance cost increase this year. Uh, this is, I think, a very positive thing for our staff in addition to the recommended cost of living that we're proposing and performance incentive that we're proposing. Um, we want to be a, a competitor in the region. We want to have our employees have the best benefit possible. Uh, and we feel like maintaining those rates because of decisions that were made last year were able to allow us to do that this year. So we're hoping uh, with some of the wellness incentives that we're going to put in place this year that we'll be able to even maintain our premiums 
uh, next year. Although we have a year to look at that, uh, we know right now that uh, we want to do a health risk assessment for our staff uh, to make sure that if there are issues with the employee that we need to work with them on to keep our premiums as low as possible, that we have case management services, our health clinic, uh, and as, as uh, well as some consultations uh, to help them improve over the course of a year. Uh, we want to keep those premiums uh, very competitive. We also had several recommendations from our, par uh, from our partners and departments uh, regarding uh, positions that they were requesting. Unfortunately, uh, the demand far ex exceeded what we were able to do, but you can see here uh, we were able to fund five and a half positions here in, in our general government areas of uh, tax and the sheriff's office, inspections, uh, you know, our project management services, as well as our EMS programs. Uh, Revaluation was a hard year. Uh, I appreciate uh, Mr. Myers and his staff and, and all they've done, um, but we need to have the opportunity to make sure that we're maximizing uh, the abilities and capabilities of our tax office, and we think this will allow us to uh, continue to, to uh, focus on our revenue as we need to and really have quality uh, assessments done. In addition, as you know, the animal uh, control issues uh, that we've talked about in conjunction with the purchase of the animal shelter has some pressures we have to deal with so officer DeWitt needs uh, some assistance there and, uh, and Sheriff Hartman so we'll be helping them in this budget as well. Uh, as far as inspections goes Mr. Mewell and his staff uh, will, will receive additional resources to be able uh, to focus on our development services and making sure that uh, people uh, in the the building field for uh, contracting subcontracting our developers uh, will be able to receive more timely uh, service and also uh, help us prepare uh, for higher level certifications. So we feel very confident about that. And then as all the capital improvements that you, you've approved are coming down our way, uh, we need better coordination among those to make sure that uh, we have a communication strategy as we work with vendors and bidders, uh, but also that we are able to streamline and help departments. Right now we have several people wearing different hats in this area and we want to make sure we're as consistent as we can be and that will help with this. And lastly, uh, but not least, we have our EMS um, and Mr. Bird's department, our paramedics. Uh, you know, we continue to have pressures in, in, in that area in particular. We want our response time to be as quality as they can be. Uh, and we feel like this will assist his department with that. So uh, as you can see, five and a half positions here. In addition, um, we were able to allocate one and a half positions uh, in our utilities department, one of which we'll be using for a line maintenance mechanic and the others, the other half position of the one you just saw, uh, because as we do capital improvements, uh, it's really about project management and making sure we're working among all of our departments to be the best we can be in that regard. We are, however, uh, proposing no rate uh, change as well uh, for our public utilities, but we're going to study those rates, different financing options, and also associated policies with our consultants and be working with you through your focus area work groups over the next year to make sure uh, we're doing what we need to do in this regard. Our end goal is really to make sure that if we need to make adjustments here, we can do those incrementally instead of all at once uh, that will better serve our citizens. So uh, we feel very confident about that. As I mentioned earlier, uh, in addition to receiving the additional staff uh, in our um, inspections and permits area, we're also enhancing our technology this year. We're very excited about that. We'll be able to get uh, real-time notifications uh, to assist not only our billing uh, for our services, but also be able to tell uh, developers and contractors where they are in the process in a more real-time fashion through technology whether that be uh, logging in online, whether that be email notifications or text notifications, uh, we want to be able to work with them in a way that makes sense. And in conjunction with that, we're updating our fee schedule and compared those to other counties, we still want to be competitive in the marketplace and, and uh, we think that that will do that this year. In addition to uh, this, you can see our tax revenues and, and where those are overall. Um, you can see our, our budget estimates for real property. They're reflective of the market study period from 2013 to 2016, and, and real property transactions have increased since our last reval. Um, and we saw some areas of the county sales indicate an increased value, but in other areas, sales still indicate a decline. Uh, so you can see, as I mentioned earlier, 
fairly uh, relatively flat overall if you add all those numbers together. Uh, and again, appreciate the numbers uh, that were provided to us uh, this year by Mr. Myers and his staff and, and our finance and budget office. So what does our property tax history look like? Uh, you can see here we've we've been good stewards of, of our citizens' dollars, our taxpaying dollars. We've kept that line uh, pretty flat, uh, had no operational increases in revenue uh, since some, you know, as many years ago as, as we continue to deal with elevated pressures every year. Uh, I'll credit our department heads uh, for that and our budget and finance office uh, for, for really being good stewards of dollars as we talked about. Uh, and you can see over time as we pay off debt, uh, we'll have some opportunities there uh, as we continue to look at our tax rate. So how does this look with the 25% fund balance policy that I mentioned earlier when I started uh, with the fiscal, uh, good fiscal stewardship that all of you have done before? Uh, you can see because of pressures over the past several years, you know, we're getting closer to that threshold. Um, and this is an estimate, obviously, for 2017, but we feel like uh, uh, we've got a year to really look at uh, different levers that we have to use and some different strategies that we can put in play uh, as well as more cohesiveness among our departments and sharing services and so uh, we feel uh, promising uh, about really working over the next year to, uh, to continue to uh, move that trend line up instead of down. So as all of you know there's really only certain levers that we have uh, as county government and you as a board uh, we can work on increasing the population. As you know, sometimes that's good and sometimes uh, there's associated pain and challenges uh, with that as it relates to infrastructure, as it relates to how rural or not rural do we want to be. Uh, we want to have smart growth. We don't want to have growth just for growth's sake. Uh, that obviously will help with our tax base and hopefully our retail base as well. Uh, our incentive structures through economic development. Uh, as you know, we'll be working with uh, uh, EDC uh, as well as Piedmont Regional Triad Council over the next several months on a more comprehensive plan as we look at uh, recruitment in general. Uh, we want to uh, see what kind of best practices are there for that and if we need to make any modifications. So that's already uh, being looked at as well as uh, raising taxes, which obviously we didn't do this year uh, because of that fiscal stewardship we mentioned, and then cuts, uh, which we did do this year uh, to be able to keep our budget where it needs to be. And these cuts were something that uh, could not have occurred without your department heads. And, and uh, many of them wanted to expand services and programs, and uh, we just weren't able to do that this year because of those pressures. So you can see here, I uh, thought this slide would be interesting for you. One cent of property tax uh, gets us, uh, so a penny gets you $447,000. And then you can see one cent of sales taxes, a little over $2.8 uh, million there. That's, that's a pretty drastic um, uh, piece. So at some point in the future, we have a, a little bit of, of room uh, with the quarter cent sales tax if we ever had a rainy day type issue. But remember, you've got your 25% uh, fund bounce policy. So uh, I think we're healthy in that regard. So we still have uh, some levers if need be, but uh, at this point, we don't feel compelled to uh, move in that direction given where we are with your 25%. So with that, I just want to make some uh, noteworthy uh, items in here. I've already mentioned some, and I won't duplicate those, but we're pleased that we're uh, able to maintain property and fire taxes. Uh, we're still working on our inmate meals contract uh, that's included in this budget, and we'll be working with the sheriff on that as well. Our comprehensive land use development plan, which we're really excited about as part of that EDC initiative that I mentioned earlier, Mr. Mewell will be working closely with us, as well as Mr. Lambert. Uh, in that process as we think about future infrastructure uh, and, and uh, unified development ordinances in partnership with our towns. We're very excited about this and think it'll uh, just be a healthy thing for all of us to go through as we think about your strategic plan that will be coming up. Uh, we're also uh, going to assess at your recommendation the consolidation of uh, health and human services agencies. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, to streamline services, what can we share, where does it make sense? Uh, we want to take a look at that and be able to uh, have a recommendation back to you about uh, what does make sense and could, could that work and if so, how would that look and, and feel? Uh, we also have in this budget revised fee schedule that you saw when we sent that out to you, as well as continued investment in our uh, seniors and, and veterans. Um, and we also looked at our outside agency funding this year and we'll be 
uh, seeking help from our Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee on how those funds should be allocated to uh, those recreation centers so it aligns with our vision for parks in the county. Um, and so more will come on that through that advisory board. We'll talk through that. As well as investing in our uh, forestry services and environmental partners with Soul and Water uh, and the Watershed Improvement Commission. And then funding our, our arts and culture and tourism uh, as well. We had some pressures uh, and changes in our elections department uh, according to statute that we had to deal with and I know many of you are aware of, as well as annualizing our um, emergency management, fire marshal, and recs and park budgets. You know, when we started those departments, we really didn't know what cost we were going to be looking at. We've had a chance to annualize those now uh, and looking back and are able to do that. Social services obviously has some pressures continued uh, with NC Fast, and that's the state technology system. And all of you know, state technology sometimes doesn't work the way we want it to. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're able to maintain our fire and rescue funding, increase our investment to behavioral health services through our uh, maintenance of effort funding, uh, and, and you'll hear more about that over the next few months. And then we changed our indirect cost allocation uh, plan. In agreement uh, with the towns, we're able to uh, keep our interlocals as they were because they're reassessed next year, not this year, maintain our mileage reimbursement rates. Uh, obviously, we've got some transitions coming with the former hospital site that's going to be given uh, to us, as well as the uh, former high school and now the animal shelter, obviously, that we've voted on a few months back. So uh, we've got to think about how to upkeep those buildings during the transition periods. Uh, and then last but not least, your strategic plan that we'll be presenting to you here over the next few months as we've been talking to several constituents in the community. As you look at its strategic plan, uh, there's really going to be five focus areas as I close because this really sets the stage for uh, our 18-19 our budget. Uh, we want to be able to, as we present and come back to you with recommendations about your strategic plan, uh, we wanted to have some focus areas and we wanted uh, to help move the collective needle on the goals that uh, we feel are most important to the county. Department heads have been involved in this process. Towns uh, will be involved in this process. Community partners and nonprofits will be involved in this process. Our faith-based community and our citizens alike. And so uh, throughout this process, we're, we're trying to figure out what is the pulse as it relates to what's most important? What are the biggest pressures we're faced with in Davie County right now uh, as we move forward? And uh, so we'll be spending a lot of time on this uh, over the next few weeks and months uh, as we compile some things to get back to you. As I said when I started, all this information is online at our website uh, for our citizens to view. Uh, and with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you for any questions and then the public hearing. And we obviously have uh, our, our finance and budget professionals here with me. If there's uh, questions that I can answer collectively, hopefully we can. All right. Any questions for Mr. Eller? did a great job. You did do a great job. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, this is a public hearing <coughs> for the budget, so we'll turn it over to Mr. Vogler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the chair has announced this is the hour and date of the public hearing for proposed county budget for the fiscal year 2017-2018, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 159-12B. There's, it's been duly published in notice of public hearing in a newspaper with general circulation of David County is required by North Carolina General Statute 168-20G of the Act, and the clerk to the board has attached the affidavit showing the publication of said paper and a date at least 10 days prior to this date. Uh, I would ask anyone who wishes to comment at this public hearing come forward to the podium, state your full name for the board, and then comment on your proposal. Chairman, seeing no one come forward, I'll now turn the public hearing back over to the board and to you as chair. Close so that you may close the public comment section of this hearing and provide the board an opportunity to discuss among yourselves what if any action you wish to take with regards to this budget. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bogler. All right. At this point, we'll declare the public hearing closed. Um, turn it back to the board to any questions or discussions we may need to have on the budget. I'd like to thank the county manager and staff 
for all their hard work and efforts. This budget doing such a fine job, and I'd move to approve. Okay. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? I'd echo Commissioner Barrett's comments. Appreciate all the hard work, and uh, good job. Okay. Any other comments? I have asked at least one question every day for the last two weeks about the budget, so I think I'm pretty well covered. I think you've asked more than one. But anyway. uh, <laughs> I had a lot of questions. <laughs> All right. Okay. Seeing no other comments, all in favor of approving the 17-18 budget as presented, raise your hand. That passes 5-0. Thank you. All right. We will move to the consent agenda. Um, if anyone has any questions about anything on the consent agenda for the evening. Uh, Mr. Eller, do you want to say anything about the space study? Um, Certainly. Since we're getting ready to move forward with. As all of you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this has been a topic of discussion among many of us for some time. Uh, as you approve your capital improvement plan, we want to make smart decisions as it relates to our facility needs. Uh, while we have great staff, all of our staff are uh, uh, extremely busy, and they're experts that can do this for us. And uh, we, again, with all the uh, capital that we would put into a lot of these projects, we want to make sure we're making the best decisions and really thinking through not just what we're dealing with now, uh, but as many of us have talked about what we're dealing with, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now. And this is going to allow us to uh, be able to make those informed, uh, statistically significant decisions uh, that are going to be critical for this county's future. So uh, we are going to be awarding mostly um, contracts, uh, uh, mostly architecture, sorry, uh, this award. We, at our last meeting, you did give me authority to negotiate with them, and we, we were able to do that uh, well under our baseline rate. Um, and so we feel very, very good about that uh, contract amount. And so we're able to actually begin this process and already have uh, with, uh, with Mosley uh, to make sure that once you approve this, uh, we've met with them even before uh, we entered into this final agreement to understand exactly the business they were in and they understood exactly what we were looking for because we wanted this relationship to be mutually beneficial. Uh, so on consent agenda, you will see that space study contract um, award, and we feel very confident uh, about them. In fact, uh, you know, I don't want to put any, anybody on the spot, but many counties have used this firm. Uh, we obviously have a vested interest not only in all of our county facilities, but one that understands uh, detention in jails and uh, Sheriff and, and, uh, is well aware of, of these vendors as well. So we feel like this vendor, uh, this architecture firm, can really focus on all of our needs as county and not just a particular area of capital. So uh, we're very confident and, and pleased to move forward with them. Okay. Thank you. Right. Any other comments about the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll entertain the motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your hand. That passes 5-0. Thank you. Okay, next we'll get to the <coughs> county manager's report. Mr. Chairman, uh, I've spent plenty of time working on budget uh, with our friends the past few weeks, so uh, Again, I won't say anything I haven't already said other than I, I just, I'm very proud of our department heads and um, our finance and budget office working with me. Uh, and it's been a good six months. So thank you for your vote of confidence and thanks to them for working with me. Thank you. All right, any old business to come before the board this evening? All right, how about any new business? We'll move to Commissioner's comments. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Mr. Chairman, um, I, just a couple things. One, uh, Carl Boone. Um, I've known Mr. Boone 
uh, long before he ran for uh, county commissioner. And I would say this, um, there was never a time uh, that I called uh, Carl or Helen Boone um, about ministry, uh, about uh, issues that related to the county, uh, issues that related to the political party that many of us belong to, uh, that he loves so much, uh, sponsor a Little League baseball team. I never heard the word no. It's just the kind of man he was. And uh, he was a giver. He was not a taker. And uh, uh, I, I just think he has invested so much in this county, our young people, our community, and I just want to say that um, he will be sorely missed. And, and I know all of our prayers uh, be, will, will be with his precious family. Um, I would like to say thanks to the staff on the budget. Um, I know we did a little bit differently this year than we have in the past in terms of our communication, but it was great. Uh, we were able to, uh, we were able to, uh, because of the way it was communicated to us in my, my perspective anyway, uh, we're able to ask all the questions we needed to ask. Uh, they were we were clearly communicated to and our questions were answered uh, and I really I really appreciate that I appreciate uh, the uh, ability of department heads now to have some say uh, in this uh, incentive pay or however they want to handle it uh, bringing the incentive issue into our health care and uh, the openness of the staff as we head into the out years, this thing is not going to get any easier. This is not going to get any easier uh, to think outside the box on issues as it relates to the budget. And so I, I really, really, really appreciate that, John and Bob and Cindy, all, all of you, all of our department heads. Uh, I also want to uh, thank Dr. Hartness, uh, folks at the school system, for taking us through the walkthrough of the school here uh, a week or so ago. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, no matter, and I say this to folks all the time, no matter where you stood on the funding, the high school, uh, this is an exciting moment for our county and for our young people. We all need to get in behind it, and I'll tell you, they, they've done a great job out there. Uh, it's going um, to be, it's going to be a facility that we can all be proud of. And I was, I was just excited to see they've already, they're already, uh, uh, you know, I know they've, they, there's constraints in terms of what they can take out of the old school, but uh, they've got stuff in that new school, and uh, it's looking good out there. So uh, thank you for that, and uh, thanks for each of you for being here. We really appreciate you and uh, your involvement and your engagement in your community. And um, as always, uh, we seek your input on everything we do. Thank you. Okay. Richard? Um, I would like to say that I had the privilege of serving with Carl Boone on this board, and, and that was a great honor. He always had the good of the county in mind uh, when we made decisions, and I'd like to extend my condolences to his family and, and all those that knew him. Also, I'd like to uh, thank the manager. I'd like to thank uh, staff that have worked so diligently on, on our budget. Uh, the department heads and all of our employees, everyone that had a, a part in doing this budget. It was a long and arduous process. Um, thank you for all the, the information that you kept us uh, informed on. Thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Dan? Well, I too want to express my condolences to the Carl Boone family and, and I just have so many fond memories of Carl. I remember um, he, he was such a, an effective person. I mean, he, even after he was no longer a commissioner, I remember many breakfasts with him at Cracker Barrel and, and uh, he would always, you know, always have something he wanted to accomplish. It was always good, but he's very persuasive and uh, I remember the stories of him negotiating with Governor Hunt 
about different things that were good for David County, and he was a person that could work with just about anybody. And so uh, he really left a wonderful legacy here in Davie County. Um, John, congratulations on your six-month anniversary, and uh, look forward to, to many more. And uh, you're right, you've got a great team here. And we're all so blessed to have them. And, and what we have here in Davie County is very special, and I think we know it. And um, and I know that we all embrace it. So thank you for all that make this such a special place to be. Thank you. John? Well, I would also like to make a few comments about Mr. Boone. Uh, I knew him quite well over the years, traveled with him around a little, little went to a few Tennessee ball games. He was a, really a Tennessee fan. Spent uh, many years with season tickets up there, and until he he got on up in age, he would go every year to every game. That was that was his thing. <coughs> but he also did an awful lot for this county. And uh, like Commissioner Jones said, he was never a no when you ask him for something. He. Uh, he served on this board. He served on the Mebane Foundation board. He served, you know, he was, he's on the Rotary for many, many years here. He started a Rotary Club over in the eastern side of Davie. There was a tremendous amount of things that the man did for this county. And uh, there's a lot of youth in this county that's better off today because of the things that Carl Boone did for him. I would also like to uh, echo what everyone else has said about the staff and the budget. I'm sure I had the most questions of any commissioner about the budget, but uh, I kind of like numbers. And uh, some of these numbers I get into, and I want to find out what's going on. So uh, there was a lot of hard work went into this, and it's a tough budget. And there's no question about that. But I think we can, we can meet it, and hopefully we can improve upon it a little bit. So we'll, do, we'll see what can happen as the year goes on. And again, thank all the staff for everything you do, not just budget season. I mean, you got a job out there. Several of you got a job 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And most of you has got a job seven days a week, 24 hours a day. There's not many things in the county that's going to operate from eight to five. It's just a lot, a lot of things go wrong and we have to deal with them. Again, thanks for all the people who showed up tonight and we appreciate you. And uh, always good to see a few people out there in those chairs. I don't want to buy too many chairs if we don't have people sitting in them. Right. Um, I can't really, I would echo everything that's been said this evening. I um, do want to say to the EMS emergency management response for the storms a couple weeks ago, appreciate all your efforts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, we, we, as Mr. Ferguson just said, we got a lot of the whole staff's on call 24 hours a day, but um, those guys, that department is really on call 24 hours a day. So great job and uh, appreciate what you did. And we were fortunate uh, it wasn't any worse. So anyway, thanks for being here. And I hope to see you next month. And with that, entertain a motion to adjourn. So motion next month. Meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Next month, we are not meeting the first Monday. We have moved that. That's July the 3rd. So um, given the, where the calendar falls, we have moved that to June the 10th. So it'll be July, July the 10th. And we could meet June 10th, but <laughs> probably wouldn't be any better here. But uh, if you'll come July 10th, that'll be good. And it'll be the second Monday. I hope to see you then. So, so a motion. Do I have a second to adjourn? So a second. All in favor? Whatever. Five zero. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.